Hello there, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and today we're going to be looking at converting between fractions, decimals and percentages. Um, we're also going to look at some contextual questions involving fractions and decimals. So let's start off with a, a, a basic fraction, something along the lines of 8 over 12. Okay, so if we treat that fraction as a sum and on our calculators we do 8 divided by 12, then we're going to come out with a number 0 0.66 recurring or 0 0.667 to three decimal places. So 8 over 12 as a decimal is 0 0.667. All we then need to do to convert that to a percentage is multiply that by 100. The reason we multiply it by 100 is because percent means per 100 and a decimal is per one or out of one and if we want a percent or out of 100, we need to multiply it by 100. And that would give us a percentage of 66.7%. Therefore, 8 over 12 is 66.7%. If we take another example, let's say 3 fifteenths, and we've been asked to convert that to a percentage, the first thing we do is we would do the sum 3 divided by 15 on our calculators, which gives us 0.2. And then because we're looking to get this as a percentage, we then need to multiply that answer by 100, which would give us 20%. I'm just going to do one more example, which is going to yield a percentage less than 1%. It's the process that we're interested in rather than the outcome. So the process always remains the same. If we have a fraction, 4 over 1,000, and we want to convert that to a percentage, we do 4 divided by 1,000 on our calculators, which gives us 0 0.004. The next step is to multiply by 100 to get a percentage. And that would give us 0.4%. If we look at some contextual examples of this, a typical question might ask you, what is 5 out of 25 as a percentage? Or it might ask you, what is 7 out of 10 as a percentage? So if we take a, something very simple first of all, what is 7 out of 10 as a percentage? We would do 7 over 10, as we were doing previously, which would give us 0 0.7. And then to get it as a percentage, we would times it by 100 to give us 70%. A different question might say, what is 2 out of every 500 as a percentage? So we would do 2 out of every 500, which would give us 0 0.004. If we then multiply that by 100, then that would give us 0.4%. So questions can be phrased in all sorts of different ways. A question might um, talk about the number of students in a class, and it might say a class has 35 students. Of those students, seven are male. What percentage of the students are female? Okay, so we know that seven out of 35 of the students are male, meaning that 28 out of 35 of the students are female. If the question asks us to determine the percentage of the class that are females, we could do 28 over 35 to give us a decimal, which is 0.8. We could then times that by 100, giving us 80%, 80% of the class are females. But there is another way of approaching that question. If we were to work out the, the percentage of the class that were males, 7 over 35 as a decimal, is 0.2 and times it by 100, then we would find out that the number of males in the class, or sorry, the percentage of males in the class is 20%. Well, the total number of students in the class must add up to 100%. Therefore, one way of calculating the percentage of females in the class is to determine the number of females, 28. Find 28 over 35 as a decimal and times it by 100 to get the percentage. Alternatively, we can use the information that we knew. 7 of the class were boys. 7 out of 35 is 20%. And because everyone in the class must add up to 100%, then 100% minus the percentage of boys 
gives us the percentage of girls. We may also have questions involving percentage increases and percentage decreases. We still approach these in a very similar way. Let's say a question asked, um, what is a 15% increase on 840? 15% increase. Well, 15% as a decimal is 0 0.15. All I've done there is 15% divided by 100 to get 15% as a decimal. Therefore, 15% of 840 is 840 times the decimal equivalent of 15%. 15% 15 of 840 is 126. Now, if I want to find a 15% increase on the 840, I would need to add 15% to the original 100%, which was 840. Therefore, 840, which was 100%, plus 126, which was 15%, gives me 966. Therefore, increasing 840 by 15% gives me 966. If the question asked for a 15% decrease, then what we would do then is we would do the 840, but this time we would need to minus the value for 15%, which is 126, and this time we would get 714. Now once again, there's a different way of approaching this question. If we want a 15% increase, on 840. We know that 840 times 1 would give us 840, it would give us the original amount. But if we want a 15% increase, what we can do is 840 times 1.15. We're trying to find 115% of the original amount. 1.15 is the decimal equivalent of 115%. That would give us the same answer as we got before, but using a slightly different method. So 840 times 1.15 gives us the 966. Now this also works in reverse. If we want a 15% reduction, then what we're actually trying to do is find 85% of the original amount. 85% as a decimal, is 0 0.85, 840 times 0 0.85 will give us the same answer as we got previously, 714, but we've done it in a slightly different way. Much the same as we changed the context of the students in the class question in order to determine the parameters we were trying to find, we can change the context of this question. We're either trying to find 115% of the original amount, or we find 15% of the original amount and add it on to 